Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from EnjoyBot. This battery is super cheap. This sells for $369 on the manufacturer's website and it's currently priced at $328 on Amazon. That comes out to $256 per kilowatt hour. This is one of the cheapest per kilowatt hour that we reviewed thus far. Additionally, this battery advertises an IP56 water resistance rating and is good for up to 48 volts or four of these batteries in series. So this video will be the usual overview of features. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside and how it's built. So this battery is actually a little bit larger than some of the others we have reviewed. It's fairly similar to the AO Lithium. It's sitting at 12 and 3 quarter inches in width. This is model number EBLIFP-12100AH and all that means is that it's 12 volts 100 amp hours. It's rated for a continuous discharge of 100 amps and a surge discharge of 300 amps for one to two seconds and has a charge rating of 50 amps. And then we just have some warnings and disclaimers on the right. Looking at the top, we have a very similar nylon strap that we see on most of these batteries. And again, the uh, charge parameters are repeated. Uh, the terminals are labeled positive and negative. This is the negative side. They come with these plastic protectors here. And there's not a whole lot of surface area here compared to some of the other batteries we have seen, but this is sufficient for 100 amps. And this battery came with an M8 bolt. This is a fairly standard bolt on these batteries that I've seen. And there's plenty of bolt here to get at least two uh, nice sized lugs on this battery. Additionally, this did come with these little uh, plastic caps to go over the screw. And that's something I haven't seen on many of these batteries that uh, while it is a cheap accessory, it adds a nice finishing touch to the installation. All right, so I've got my 12 volt Ames battery charger here, set to approximately 50% of its rated current, which I believe is 40 amps. I always forget if this is 70 or 80 amps. And it's pushing 41 and a half amps, so we'll leave this run until it shuts down. All right, so I've got my standard test set up here. We're using a Batrium shunt as part of the Watchmon 5. And this tablet displays voltage, amperage, wattage, capacity in amp hours, and capacity in watt hours. My test load over here is a 2000 watt inverter with some incandescent light bulbs connected. And as usual, we're trying to get as close to a 0.2 C rate or 20 amps as we can. All right, so we'll just leave this run until hopefully the BMS in this battery shuts it off. All right, so our test finished out at 102.1 amp hours. The starting voltage was 14.2 volts. The ending voltage was 9.87 volts. So that ending voltage is the voltage at which the BMS shut down. We had an average discharge current of 23.4 amps and the test took just under 260 minutes. All right, now that the battery is fully discharged, it's time for the fun part. Unfortunately, once again, there are no screws or anything, so this case is glued, and that does back up the IP56 rating. So I'll use the putty knife method to try and see if I can get it pried apart cleanly again. So we have a thick layer of shrink wrap on the outside, and then you can see the inside is covered with a layer of epoxy board. Oh wow, they're bolted together. I didn't expect them to be bolted together. All right, so this looks to be built very well. So the main positive here is a number six gauge silicone insulated wire with a 200 degrees Celsius rating. And it's covered with this high temperature insulative material. And we have a lug crimped nicely on the end here. These are 10 millimeter serrated flange nuts. And we can see they have the power wire on first and then they have the balance lead. And that actually looks like a pretty nice lug. And we have these battery studs are welded on directly to the terminals of the battery. And these bus bars are made of pure aluminum. The balance leads are nicely bundled up across the center of the battery. And each lead is terminated with a crimped on ring terminal covered in heat shrink. And the cells do all have their original QR code, though I don't personally recognize what type this is offhand. And I also don't see any sign of corrosion, leakage, or anything like that on the vents. These cells appear to be perfect. And you can see from the top and the side profile here, these cells are nicely lined up. They are perfectly flat. There's no bulging or anything like that. Uh, they do have a layer of this insulative paper. I don't know what you call it. The battery, fish paper, whatever it is. Uh, in between each cell, which is good. I like to see that as well. And then they just have uh, one piece of strapping tape going the whole way around the pack to hold it together. Again, not compressing it, just fixing the cells in place. The BMS is connected to the negative with a pair of number eight gauge uh, silicone insulated wires. That is one pair going from the battery to the BMS. Uh, and then there was a second pair coming from the BMS to the terminal, which I've already removed. 
Now the printing on this BMS is mostly in Chinese, so I don't really know what kind or brand it is. However, I do see it is rated for 100 amps. And perhaps this is the model number here. It looks like ZW-3SABM0-H03. Uh, so I was just about to say that as I removed the balance lead and the negative that I didn't see any temperature sensors on this BMS. However, I see they do have one down here on the side, which is properly affixed to the cell. And unfortunately, this does appear to be a thermal switch, not an actual temperature sensor. Um, I do see on the sensor itself, it says 75 degrees Celsius, so I'm guessing that's the point at which this switch will turn on. Um, so I don't believe this battery is going to have a low temperature protection, unfortunately, but we'll still test this anyway. It looks like there's actually a second one here on the left, so I'm going to have to peel off this BMS completely to get this one out. Okay, so I see what they did here. This is actually the same sensor, so they just took the lead of the sensor, ran it under the BMS, and they have it down the side. So there is only one temperature sensor on this battery. Okay, so now we have our battery charging at 5 amps with the iCharger X6. You can see the negative lead is going to the P- minus of the BMS, and the positive lead is going to the main positive post here on the right. I've got my glass of frozen salt water here, and we'll just dip the sensor in. And as you can see, the battery is still charging, because this is not an actual uh, temperature sensor, it's not a thermistor it's simply a thermal switch so it uh, so the switch engages at a predefined temperature in this case of 75 degrees Celsius and we should be able to uh, simulate that with a heat gun and we should see this charger shut off once the sensor reaches 75 Celsius and there we go output connection broken so this battery unfortunately does not have low temperature charging protection alright guys so there we go this battery tested out great it's built very well the only downside is it does not have the low temperature charging protection. So if you're going to use it in an unconditioned space or you're using it somewhere where it could potentially drop below freezing, uh, you need to consider how you're going to handle that. I don't necessarily consider that a deal breaker in my personal opinion because there are people out there who don't live in climates where they have uh, freezing temperatures and they don't have to worry about that. So yeah, other than that, this is a great deal and it's one of the best I have seen in terms of price per kilowatt hour. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out. I have many more batteries on the way. Some have not even been released yet. I have an inverter pre-order. There is lots of fun stuff coming up. So um, definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button before you go. And thanks for watching.